Is there anything more romantic than a full moon? How about a ring? Ruby or sapphire? Can't decide? Try them all on for size. You might be able to name every planet in our solar system, but can you really appreciate them from millions of miles away? Don't get up. We'll bring them to you. This is what if, and here's what it would look like if planets replaced the moon. Let's start with Neptune, the furthest one away. Don't be fooled by its calming color. Neptune is a force to be reckoned with, which might be why it was named after the Roman god of the sea. Neptune is known for its supersonic winds, the strongest in the solar system, reaching speeds of up to 2100 kilometers per hour. Neptune is the only planet that was found by a mathematical equation, which might still be cool if special effects weren't invented. So put down your calculator and see for yourself. Number six is Uranus. Save your dirty jokes, they're not enough to break the ice on this planet. In fact, there isn't any ice to begin with, just hydrogen, helium, and methane. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system, well, almost. While Neptune, on average, is colder, Uranus experiences temperatures as low as minus 224 degrees, which are the coldest on record. So maybe not the best place to send a team of astronauts if it were to take the moon's place. But hey, it's still a nice color. Number five is Saturn. Wouldn't that be pretty? We'd actually get to see the planet's icy rings up close, but thankfully not too close. Since Saturn is 35 times the size of our moon, Earth would most likely be pulled into its orbit. But we'd still be too massive to fall into Saturn's ring system, which is made up of particles that range in size from micrometers to meters. Here comes trouble. Number four is Jupiter. As the biggest planet in our solar system, Jupiter is twice the size of every other planet combined. Not only that, this planet could easily swallow 40 of our moons. And if Jupiter replaced our moon, we'd be finished too. We'd end up orbiting Jupiter rather than it orbiting us. And can you imagine what that kind of gravitational influence would do to our tides? Don't worry, the intense radiation from Jupiter's magnetosphere would fry you long before you could mourn the loss of your favorite beach. Number three is Venus. You might say that Venus is Earth's evil twin. Scientists believe that billions of years ago, Venus was quite similar to Earth. But then the planet got super hot, its water evaporated, its atmosphere thickened, and Venus turned into one giant greenhouse filled with carbon dioxide. Premonitions, anyone? Anyway, that's why Venus is now the hottest planet in the solar system. It also happens to be the closest planet to Earth. But why not bring it a little closer? Hope you've got blackout curtains, because Venus is three and a half times bigger than the Moon. At that size, and considering that Venus reflects six times as much light as the Moon, our sky would only ever get as dark as twilight. Up next is the red planet, Mars. Mars is smaller than Venus, but it's still twice as big as the Moon. And it would make for a more exciting nightlight since, without the thick cloud cover of Venus's atmosphere, you could actually see what's going on up there. Imagine seeing a red dust storm on a different planet from the comfort of your own porch. Last but not least is Mercury. Sorry Pluto, you're no longer considered a full-size planet. Mercury may be the smallest planet in the solar system, but it's not timid. Sitting only 47 million kilometers away from the Sun at its closest orbit, Mercury is quite a daredevil. It's also a speed demon, taking only 88 days to go around the sun. But not so fast, Mercury. Let's get a better look at you. Mercury is actually only a little bit bigger than the moon, so our sky really wouldn't look that different from how it does now. So now that you've had a look at seven different moons, which one do you like best? There are no wrong answers, unless you choose Jupiter, because that one will kill us. But also, there's nothing wrong with the moon we've got now. After all, it's been pretty good to us for the past four and a half billion years, sinking our tides, lighting our nights, and giving us something to enjoy together. <laughs>